Hi everyone, I am Sangeet Bhandari. I am currently pursuing Masters in Data Science from Columbia University in the city of New York. I am also working as a graduate student assistant at Northeast Big Data Innovation Hub. In today's lecture, we will see what data visualization is. This is an introductory lecture in the field of data science where if someone is just starting out with their data science journey, then they can refer to this lecture to cover the topics of data visualization and what the basics of data visualizations are. The contents of the lectures are straightforward and simple. So first we'll see uh, visualization, then representation, that is like what are different data objects in a particular representation. And then what are the standard visualization components? In this lecture, we use two data sets in the example. First one is Titanic data set, which is easily available on Kaggle. Then second one is US census data set, which is also uh, openly available on Kaggle. And the third one, which is again from Kaggle is Iris data set. Now coming to the visualization. Data visualization helps humans better understand data and identify some simple patterns with their visual perception capability. Through visualization, information can be displayed as a graph or figure or a table to be read by humans. This step provides input to human instead of machine's fine patterns. Visualization maps information in the data to graphic elements to facilitate the communication between machines and humans. A good visualization allows humans quickly absorb the information contained in the data, which in turn helps them to understand the data and identify some interesting patterns in the data. In this example, the visualization allows humans like us to quickly understand the relationship between temperature and latitude from tens of thousands of data points. So this is the true power of visualization displayed right here that uh, we have we are able to summarize and understand tens of thousands of data points using a single figure. Uh, this is the US COVID cases visualization. Uh, this visualization allows us to quickly understand the trend of COVID cases over the time from hundreds of data points. Now uh, we come to the representation part. Through visualization, data points are mapped to graphic representations. Different visualization techniques can be used to do the mapping. If only one attribute with categorical values is considered, it is typically to group those records into corresponding categories and show the total count of each category through bar chart or histogram. If multiple attributes are considered, a data object can be represented as a row of a table or a line on the graph. It can also be mapped to a point in a two or three dimensional space where the dimensions are either the attributes of a data object or transformed from the attributes. The distance of two data points in such space always indicates how similar two data objects are. If they are close enough, then they are very similar to each other. If the distance between them is higher than that, then we can say they are not that similar to each other. Now uh, we will look at attribute values and relationships. So uh, for attribute values, for numeric attribute values, they are mapped to continuous ordered graphic features such as through the location, intensity, color, or size of a data point to carry the information related to the ordering among the values. For categorical features uh, or categorical attribute values, the assumption is that there is no ordering among the values each value can be represented with unique location, color, shape, and so on. The relationship between data objects can also be visualized through explicit links or be derived from their graphic features, such as close locations, same or even like similar colors, etc. Standard visualization components. It includes title of the figure, then uh, labels of X and Y axis, the legend of each line, the line properties such as color, type, etc. The marker properties, which also include colors and their styles. Axis should be, that is X and Y axis in general. If the dimensions are more than two, then we also have Z axis sometimes. But like uh, we, uh, in normal visualizations, we don't go beyond uh, three axis. So for that uh, intensity or that particular fourth or fifth dimension, we will use different things like uh, maybe color intensity or so on. 
access should be properly scaled to make a good visualization result. If you plot the data to multiple figures and compare them, the access of each figure should be scaled the same for an easy comparison. Humans tend to use colors to tell the intensity or value difference. So the colors of data points should also follow the convention such as warmer colors correspond to higher temperatures or darker color corresponds to larger values. And then like it should be scaled with appropriate contrasts. Here are some of the like Python packages links that are commonly used. Uh, first one is matplotlib.py plot library and second is Seaborn. So uh, in like even my workflow, I I use matplotlib and Seaborn likewise, but like Seaborn is more easy to implement, but uh, everyone should start with matplotlib. This figure shows the usage of colors to differentiate two events. So here we can see there are two events, event one and event two. Event one is represented in black using like black line and the event two is represented using red one. And it is so easy to uh, show the information about both the events in the same figure if we just choose like different line colors. And even it becomes easy to compare the both the events. This figure shows the usage of line styles to differentiate two events. Uh, in the earlier slide, we saw that we use different colors. Here we are using uh, different line, sty line styles to differentiate two events. This is an example where the usage of color and styles of markers are used to differentiate two events, event one and event two. This is a good example of axis scaling. This example shows the visualization effects with different y-axis scales. The left one better highlights the difference between the two gender groups compared to the right one. Here, the y-axis is scaled differently and it makes a lot of different if, a difference if you see, look at it closely. Now we will see different visualization techniques, including histograms, then box plots, pie charts, bar charts, scatter plots, and heat map. All of these are some of the uh, primary visualization that everyone should know about. Uh, coming to histograms. Histograms can be used to visualize the value distribution for both numerical as well as categorical values. For continuous variables, you can tune the number of beans to determine the granularity and smoothness of visualization result. The more the beans, the more jaggy the histogram plot is. Titanic dataset is used in this slide. Now coming to box plots. Box plots are used to visualize the value distribution for a single numerical attribute. It shows the mean, the interquartile range, and the range of the values. The values outside the range are represented as outliers. In this visualization, uh, we have used Titanic dataset uh, for the left one and uh, census data set is used in the right plot. So as you can see in the Titanic plot of age, here is a distribution which is shown using box plot. If we start from the uh, top, then this is the maximum value and this is the minimum value. These are called quartiles. So this is Q1, that is first quartile. This is second quartile. This is third and this is fourth one. The difference between Q1 and Q3 is interquartile range. If we go from bottom up, then this is the minimum value. And this particular quartile represents 25th percentile. This quartile represents a uh, 50th percentile of the data. This is 75th percentile of the data. So this particular value represents that 75% of the data points are from zero to like less than 50. And this maximum that is the last quartile represents that 100% of the values are within the range of 0 to 80. Python's box plot function allows to group data records based on the values of a column, such as survived in the example, and visualize the value distribution of the another column, such as age, for each value of survived. So here we can see we are looking at age for like the distribution of age for different values of survived. So zero represents population which did not survive and one represents uh, someone who has survived the Titanic crash. And we are seeing the distribution of survived and those who 
weren't able to survive the distribution of their age. You can also plot the value distributions of multiple columns in the same figure, like in the right figure. Here we are using Titanic dataset and your census dataset is used in the right figure. Now coming to pie chart. Pie chart can be used to display the pro proportional distribution of values for a categorical attribute. It uses different colors for those values and generate a pie shaped chart. However, it is not encouraged to use pie charts in many cases. Humans cannot easily pick up the difference of slice sizes and could have wrong comprehension of the information. Like in this example, it is hard to tell that the size of the slice with S is about eight times the size for the value of Q. If there is a large number of indices, the difference between slices could be very slight and hard to identify. Using a table to summar summary the information is usually more effective. And in this example, we have used Titanic data set. So in general, as I stated earlier, pie charts are not like preferred in a lot of cases because we can't easily distinguish or you know interpret what has shown in the pie chart. So if we see like the values here and just like compare that to what have been shown in the pie chart and it's very hard to get that particular gist that maybe like the S is about eight times of the Q. Now coming to line graph. Line graph is usually used to show the change or trend of values over certain index such as time. Selecting multiple columns for y-axis results in multiple lines. Each line corresponds to a selected column. By default, x-axis is the index and we can have multiple columns for y-axis. Now coming to bar chart, one of the, I would say like most important one and the one which is very frequently used. Bar chart can be used to visualize the summary or aggregated information of categorical values. The height or length of a bar is proportional to the value it represents. X axis represents the values of a category and Y axis represents the specific information such as counts, the sum or other aggregated information. Uh, the data used in slides is census data. Now coming to a uh, scatter plot. Scatter plots are used to display values for a pair of numerical attributes corresponding to X and Y axis. The value pairs determine the location of data points in the plot. Other attribute values can be displayed through coding the points on size, color, or shape. Scatter plot is an effective visualization technique to identify correlation relationship between attributes, display the value distributions, and even like identify object clusters and outliers. This is an example of scatter plot. Uh, and in scatter plot, we need to specify the coordinate that is X and Y axis. Uh, as you can see here, we have specified what X indicates and what Y indicates. So X is in height and Y is weight. Uh, the figure shows a basic scatter plot of a data set where each data record contains the height and weight of a person. From the plot, we can see the two attributes roughly form a re linear relationship, indicating the correlation between them. Here, the left plot suggests that there is no obvious correlation between total pop and poverty. The right plot suggests a clear correlation between men and women. Census data set is used in the slide. Here we can see an example of scatter plot uh, where we are distinguishing the data instances of different classes. This shows the three different types of iris based on their petal length and petal width values. The records of the same times are clustered together in the figure. Now coming to heat map. Heat map provides visual cues by linking the magnitude of values to the intensity of the colors. It can be used for one variable or multiple variables to detect correlation among them. Here we have used census data. We can see that on the x-axis we have poverty and unemployment. And on the y-axis we are just like showing which uh, the value of state. And here we can see the 
actual interpretation of the poverty values and based on this color codes we can determine which state has more poverty or more unemployment rate so these were some of the basic data visualization points that are used frequently while doing any uh, exploratory data analysis and if you have any doubts feel free to reach out to us thank you so much